All right, welcome everyone to the Hurley Investments Trade Findings and Adjustments for Tuesday night, the 4th of February. We just had two nice up days in our market. So let me go over positions that you might be in if you chose to follow along. And let's see how we're doing in real life. And yes, I'm going to show, I can show you some pivot points there, Ida. All right. So this is one I'm trying to cash out. And in this one right now, count positions, we have our Apple vertical. That someone asked me here earlier today. Let me see if they are here. They are not here, so they better get the recording. But it's what I did show you yesterday. Kevin, why don't you take off the short call, right? What if you book $4.05? Well, if I book $4.05, It means I lose $5 of credit. And I know some people that took off that credit yesterday. If I lose $5 of credit, this increases my cost basis by $5. And my new risk in the trade, for all intensive purposes, come on. Now is no longer $2.95, but I have to add $5 to it. My new risk in the trade is $7.95. I have just tripled the risk in my trade by cashing in my short call. I've tripled my risk almost in my trade, taking a profit off of a side of the trade. Someone just typed in there. <laughs> so, but Kevin, yesterday you might have gotten three dollars, which which is good. But understand, you now have five dollars and ninety-five cents of risk. Why did I not do that? Well, it comes back down to my chart. So let's go ahead and type in here, Apple. Pivot points are readjusting. And our pivot point, my first R1 resistance level now sits at 327.32. Which means if I've got a new cost basis of $7.95, my new break even sits at 327.95. Which is above my first R1 resistance pivot point that Apple will probably not get above in this wacky market we're dealing with right now. Why won't it get above it? Well, because we're going to run into down here at the bottom, we're going to run into some selling pressure, or we should, even though you can come and tell me, Kevin, no sales pressure for three weeks, for three weeks. No sales pressure for seven weeks. I get it. But after you see that run, guess what you typically run into? Selling pressure. 
It would surprise me if we see Apple above uh, 327.32. If I've got a cost basis of now $7.95, I'm not comfortable in being in that position. Whereas if I kept things just as they are, and time decay runs into my position, if it gets up to 327, I should be able to sell this position with some in the money profit and some time decay on that short call. Um, I only need it to get to 325, and I'm looking at being in a profitable position in my Apple vertical bull call. That is why I chose not to. If you sold off yesterday, the best you could have done was probably have about $5.15 of risk. If the stock trades up to $3.27, you could be okay. But for me and my risk tolerance, I wasn't comfortable with it. I wasn't comfortable. I it bothered me. I let the numbers do the talking for me. And the numbers were not talking to me saying, hey, you know what? This is what you need to do. So, interesting, Disney. I've got some leap long calls on Disney. I've got one. And this is one I'm going to need to take some profit from to pay some, some taxes on. Um, I will probably close this Disney call down. I've got some Ford calls. I need to take some pro. Well, I need just to close it down for cash. This I'm probably getting out of it, and I'll be done with it. With that said, I've got my other account, the trust account that I'm growing. So let's see how I'm going to run this one. Disney, I have a couple calls here. A couple calls that I'm thinking, you know what? Um, it wouldn't surprise me if tomorrow Disney starts down, but finishes up. They beat top and bottom line. Um, Disney had two, 26.5 million, uh, subscribers for Disney plus, um, Disney did really good. Their earnings was perfect. Perfect, if not better than that. Um, O'Hare said if they get the breach above 150, they could go to 170. Record closes was at 153.41. Uh, so O'Hare thinks they've got a 17% upside. Earnings for Disney. They beat top and bottom line, $1.53 versus an estimate of $1.44. Revenue is $20.86 billion versus $20.79. They had 26.5 subscribers. A subscriber is based uh, for someone that is paying for their service. Yes, they may get the service free through Verizon, but Verizon is paying for that service. Um, ESPN Plus at 7.6 million. Hulu has 30.7 million total subscribers now. Um, I did the bundle. I did Disney Plus, ESPN Plus, and Hulu, which is why their subscriber base, even with their discount, paid on average $5.56 per month. Um, Yes, they don't have an answer to their, uh, their Shanghai park, which they closed. They may be negative for a little bit as parks in Shanghai and Hong Kong will negatively impact the second quarter. But to what extent, they don't know because they don't know how long the parks are going to be closed. So... Uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see some people jump into Disney tomorrow, more towards the end of the day. I like where Disney's at. Ford. 
I keep trying to talk someone into buying Ford. Man, Ford blew chunks today. Ford just screwed the pooch is the best way I had to say it. Um, they took some write downs on warranty issues on three of their cars. Their biggest one, their new Ford Expedition. So here they are streamlining their, their factories to produce the most profitable cars for them. And they're still having problems with it. With it. It's like the iPhone 8 or whatever that had all those glitches. and. <laughs> ah. Ford, if we take a peek at Ford, already after hours, Ford is down like 10%. Oh, it's only 9.48%. Sitting at $8.31. So my calls, in all honesty, I am looking to dollar cost average these calls. Any Ford calls, I am looking to do nothing more but dollar cost average into those positions. Um, it's funny because someone just said, good thing that person F didn't listen to you. That Ford guy, right? Well. Again, it's part of the process. I'm really looking for my long calls to lose half their value. That's what I'm looking at. In fact, I'm probably actually only looking at something along the lines of 45 cents. And I'm going to dollar cost average these. Tomorrow, looking at a chart and where Ford will most likely go historically, we're probably going to see Ford go down and touch the $7.50 to the $7.33 range. Because that's what Ford does when it blows chunks. And it then comes back to a higher price at about $8.80 before the next earnings. So that is what I'm looking for Ford. I wish I could. Get that stupid ad out from below. Hold on one second. All righty. So as I'm looking at Ford and where Ford is going to go, they are already at $8.31. And they're probably not going to pick up, which means they're going to fall and gap down below their S2 number. Six month low, $8.16. If I pull this out to a yearly low, I'm looking at roughly $7.57. That's the dollar range I'm looking to dollar cost average. Kevin, could they go down to 683? Maybe, but probably not. There's probably enough institutional ownership. Um, I would not expect it to go down that far. Ford also has a buyback program. So it's $7.57 to $7.80 that I'm going to look to dollar cost average. Why would I do that? Because that way Ford only has to get up to $8.50 and I can then take off some positions for a small profit or lower my exposure to Ford with a lower um with a lower cost basis than i did three months ago or a month ago i'm just working on using a dollar cost averaging strategy to help me out 
Kevin, could you and shouldn't you sell short calls on it? Um, I most definitely could. And that might be something that that if I could sell a short call, problem is we already had the drop. So in all honesty, if I was to sell a short call on this, even a short term one, out to March 13th or March monthlies, probably a March monthly is what I'd be looking for. I'd have to sell it around the $8 mark. And at eight dollars, I'd probably only get like 27, 26, 27 cents, which is helpful. But I now have eight weeks where it's got to trade below eight dollars, where 750 was a pretty big bounce to come back. So you look at your past experience, doesn't guarantee future results. Six eighty three up to eight thirty five, seven fifty up to eight thirty four, seven sixty five to eight forty two, seven eighty two and ran up to ten bucks. So um, I would love some change on it. It doesn't mean I have to sell it off. If it starts to come back up, if I could take a dime, fifteen twenty cents out of twenty seven cents. It's a good adjustment strategy for me looking into the future. So with all that said, what could we do for a trade today? I've got an interest in Starbucks, not a coffee drinker. Um, they're getting hit in China too. But looking at the chart, As you look at this chart on Starbucks, what do you notice? If you look at this chart at Starbucks, what do you notice? Can you guys see that okay? To give you a hint, I'm primarily going right here. What do you notice? Ooh, I just saw someone say at resistance. Is it at resistance? At a pivot point, in fact, it traded above its pivot point. And its pivot point was 87.83. It's actually above 88, which is the 50 day. And its next run up is to 91.13, its first resistance level to the upside. As I took a look at this one, Technically, this sets up nicely for a simple bull call on Starbucks. It can set up for one out to March. Um, one, two, three, four, four, five weeks. I might do a March 13th. I might choose a slightly in the money. I would sell right above its pivot point at 91 and a half. Here we have a one for one risk to reward bull call on Starbucks. Actually, it's 350, isn't it? It's even better. It's a one risk to 1.29 rewards. 
risk 1500 to try to make 1970. The short answer is you're not going to make or probably not going to get make your full amount because it's resistance level. Again, looking at the chart, it's resistance level sits at 91.13. So up at 91, you want to take your profits. At 91 is where you're looking for it possibly to, to stall out. If it breaks 91.13 and keeps going higher, you can get in for your maximum profit. But with all the bad news, to see how this one sets up, $3.50 of reward for $1.50 of risk, this would be my trade of the day. This would be the one that I'd be looking for to, to make some money on. Now, obviously, if the markets look down tomorrow, I might wait a day and put it on Thursday morning. I've got five weeks to decide to do this one. But boy, what a great risk to reward. And with that said, as I pull up Starbucks, hold on one second, let me grab one more screenshot. Preview, of course. That would be the trade. I'm gonna shut that down for a quick second. Um, what was I just going to show you guys? I forgot. Oh, uh, if the market opens up tomorrow, and I said Starbucks. Extended hours, it's flat. It's showing that it's flat. Let me check one other place. I'm going to check. Uh, it actually shows that it's down eight cents. A little bit of profit taking. Extended hours down eight cents at eight uh, eight thirty eight. Um, if we look to have a down day in the market tomorrow, I might wait a day to put this on. And. I'm checking our markets right now. Futures are down, S&P's down six, Dow's down 58, NASDAQ's down 20. Um, there were some big misses today, Snap blew it. Um, it's one that I might look to put on tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon. It will depend on Starbucks and the market as a whole. $88 is that point that I wanna see the 50-day simple moving average hold for us. And that's what I'd be looking to do. I guess it's 87.83 is that support level that I'm looking at. And 88 even for the 50-day simple moving average. So if it's challenging that at the beginning of the morning tomorrow, I'm going to hold off. If it looks like it's holding it towards the end of the day, I'm most likely putting this trade on. And I'm just playing Starbucks to, to move simply from 88.38 up to 91, and at 91, I'm going to book a profit. Any questions on the Starbucks bull call? Any questions on the Starbucks bull call? Is this helpful for you guys to see how I work through positions that necessarily aren't working? how I've worked through Apple the last couple, well, last week to see where it was stressing me out, where I had, you know, thank goodness I had the time, especially on Apple. You know, last week I was cussing up a storm. Good, 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 good. All right, well, my goal is to share with you how, how I'm looking at the market, and really I want to share with you my struggles um, anyone can show you how they made money. I want to show you how I deal with my struggles so that you can learn from me. Maybe not make some of those mistakes yourself. Maybe change the way you do do things to better fit your risk tolerance. And to learn from someone that's been around the block a couple times, which to a certain degree has allowed me to suffer slash make it through this uh, the past couple weeks. It has, well, the last week and a half. Hasn't been easy till the last two days. The week and a half before that, 
I'll admit, kind of sucked. Guys, have a great um, a great tomorrow. I will post this, but it's an 88 9150 March 13th bull call. That's what I'm going to be doing. That's what I'm going to be posting here today or tomorrow morning. It is literally a five week March 13th, 8191 bull call on Starbucks, assuming that it's holding the $88 mark tomorrow. If it's fighting it, I'll wait till the end of the day. If it can hold the $88 level tomorrow, at the end of the day, I'll put it on then. Guys, have a wonderful evening. Pleasure spending the time with you. Look forward to getting some more trades in, and you guys have a great evening. Bye-bye.